All right, dude, we're just going for it. Guys, I'm really excited about this. This is my new video editing software. This iced coffee's tremendous. I'm, I'm like seriously because you guys know I've taken like a super vacation on on YouTube. I'm just very thankful that I've had a lot of work and people sending me stuff and um you know I said I said to myself, I said Dude, I I have a big appreciation for YouTube. The very the very videos I started doing, man, I, I f didn't think anything would happen. I was just like, I just love um, doing this stuff. And then it got to the point where I was like being the tech to many studios and answering a lot of questions and then, um, you know, reviewing plugins and then all this stuff was coming in. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I really have no time to get into Final Cut, man. I'm like... So I bought Final Cut. Check this out. It's I think it'll show up at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, there it is. So I bought, you know, and started doing film and editing and stuff like that. Dude, that's a lot of work, man. And that's why those guys should you should really honor and respect that. And I respect anybody that's in the film business and and videography and and I've done some stuff. Um, we we spent like a year doing. Uh, um, trailer and sound design i learned so much from a, a guy that super cool dude man he's worked on some great stuff and and then i was like like two years go by and i'm like dude i haven't really been keeping up with these videos and then i go on youtube and i go yeah man i'm gonna start doing videos every day and i was like and then i i get a video done i'm not kidding you i gotta share this with you guys i get a video done and then i would like say dude there's like 65 guys with that video and then i would be like then I'd spend a little time on Facebook, and I'm like, man, now like it's an hour and a half in, and I got like you know eight songs to work on, and I'm like, so I open up Final Cut, and I'm like, God help me, like I can't do all this stuff. So editing video was a big deal, and I was like, I was talking to my good friend Freddie uh, Demarco. You've seen him on some of the videos for Warm and some of the stuff we've done, and he's an amazing player, amazing engineer, and and I was like, I was like, I gotta find something. So he calls me up and he goes, he goes, my brother's doing classes and some other stuff and they teach and, and, and I was like, yeah, um, he needs something where he can switch between things. Like if he's playing piano here. So I did some research and I came across this, watch this though. This is really cool. This is why we got this thing hooked up. So this is my iPhone. This is sweet. Now you're going to still see the picture, but this is going to let us do a lot more video. Now, it's not the best, but it's your video on your iPhone. Um, so, yeah, I just got this thing all routed together. It's got some HDMI and stuff. And then this comes out to this laptop that I got that I use for traveling and stuff. And then I got a Thunderbolt out to this. You don't need that to make this run. But, yeah, so now we can do video. It is actually editing the video as I do this. So we got this back camera, front camera, and then I got this. Wow, that's weird, isn't it? I don't know why it does that. So I'm going to put my phone down. Um, oh, I wasn't even on that. I don't know why it does that. <laughs> so, anyway, so anyways, we're going to do a cool video. I'm going to shut this one down and let it sort of sit here. I'll put it on the ground. Dude, I had the perfect video, so I'm still working out the kinks. There's a little more stuff that goes on on live that, you know, if you've probably done live, you're thinking I'm amateur hour, and that's okay. But yeah, the phone was interfering. I set the phone here on the first video, and all you hear is that that thing coming through the speakers. You know, got you guys know what I'm talking about. Like you actually hear the phone going, and you're like, so the whole video is ruined. But today, dude, this is gonna be fun, man. I'm gonna show you some some unorthodox ways or new plugins that have come out. And the goal here is this. In in the way I'm gonna do these videos is is all about creativity. So I think. I was thinking about videos. I'm like, dude, it's got to be towards the facts of what we use these tools for. And this would be a perfect example. A company comes to me and they go, um, Doug, man, we're listening to this record. We only got the two track. We only got the drum kit. We got the stems for you. But can you make the can you make the drums come alive? And uh, in my early years engineering, the first tool I would go to is a compressor. And if you're watching out there, a lot of you do that. So let's say it you know you got a drum kit whether it's an edm kit whether it's a a rock kit whether it's a pop kit whether it's whatever kit okay um i know in the edm world a lot of guys would say why would you put an ssl bus compressor on there like i heard uh you know a few times like that yeah why would you want it to be 
smaller. So the SSL is like a more refined sound, but it's a punchy sound. So I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, so this would be my go-to. I'd go to the SSL. I would, I would set this here, you know, like a point. Sorry, guys. I got to get used to my controller. Human being. Um, so I would open up an SSL, and I would set this here, and I'd have like a real short release. You know, the attack would be 0.3 or 0.10. And what that would do is allow the transient to come through, and then I could crush it down. Let's see what this sounds like. Check it out. Makeup game. Off. So that'd be a cool way to do it. I mean, you, you added a little more snap, but that's not what people pay you for. Okay, like I'm, I'm being real. YouTube channel, it has become real. Okay, people don't pay you for that. What was that, Doug? So what's the unorthodox way of doing this? And sometimes it could just be that simple where you just add a little more crack because the, the mix is like the Mona Lisa and if you just add a little more color, it'll turn brown. That's what my Uncle Jay told me one time because he's, he's an artist. He said, yeah, too much, it just the whole painting turns brown. You can't see what's going on. So sometimes it is. So I don't want to be too cliche and make fun of what I, I was doing. But sometimes people want more than that. They want the whole stereo image of the whole drum kit to change. So here's one of the new plugins that, that I came in contact. I know it's been out for a while, but the Pan EQ. So I, I had a trial of this and I bought it and I started really messing with it. I was like, dang, dude, that thing's great. So what I can do here is it gives you three pan points, and I'm gonna do some unorthodox ways to get tighter, punchier drum kits. You know, something that really, really vibes in the in today's system. Sounds real hi-fi and real, real punchy. So I would say today's mixing is more about harmonics, more about stereo image, more about depth. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some cool plugins today, and hopefully you can leave from this and go, yeah, dude, those are great, um, or not. I don't know. So here's what we did. So listen to, to how this takes off this sound from this drum kit. All right, so you guys know. Now, I know there's a guy right now thinking, dude, Doug, that's way too much top. Like, it, it sounds better, but it's too much top. What's cool about this plugin is this, okay? So you know what the Plugin Alliance plugin is actually doing. This is actually the stereo field, okay? So from right to left, here's your center. So we can find things in the stereo field and just edit them. I think I can go back, like, yeah. So that's your back button, just in case you screwed up. But I can go back and and find just the kick drum and, and listen between these speakers and go, okay, this is right there. Okay, it's like too right. So, um, yeah, in the, in the frequency response, you can literally just dial in what you want to find. So in this case, we did 1K. Um, this case, we did 4K. And on the left side, we did 4K. And it, and it added a whole new dimension to this drum kit without without just putting a bus compressor on and crushing it which is really amazing because it's a it's a new sound it's unique so now the next thing we did so that's what we got So we add a little little life to the kick the the client says Doug I want it to punch dude I want more punch so now we're going to find a little more punchy frequency ranges, and we, we lift those. It's like I'm on masking it. So both these off. So 
So, dude, that, that literally brought a whole new life to the snap of the drum kit. It was Now you hear the top of the kick, you hear the top of the snare, you hear the punch of the snare, um, you hear the punch of the kick, and it, it, it translates. That's the frequency range that translates on today's systems, these iPhones and, and hi-fi systems and all that good stuff. So, so here's the problem, though. Like, you can't just stop there because if I turn that way loud in this studio, it's probably going to rip my head off. So here's a little trick you guys can can incorporate, and I brought up uh, Freddie DeMarco on this, but he really, um, really showed me how this works because he's more in when he was doing more mix. I was doing more bus work, and I met him, and, and he showed me how they used to nail that 76, and he's he's let me actually borrow his 76, but when you hit it it's got this top but a lot of people would drive that into a ds or to bring that top back down and you get this really really energized sound but it doesn't it's not overwhelming in the speakers so getting that kind of snap some guys might just just totally eliminate what they did you know and they go no i can't do that because it's too bright but here's a trick that we do after this so the next step in getting like real tight focused drums if you see on my SSL, I'm going to show you this with my handy camera here. Let me kick this back on again. Um, that's why I have this. But on the SSL, what made this popular to me is, you guys see that there? Is it has an expander gate, so right there. And I use that a lot when I'm using hardware. I'll use this a lot because you can actually just pull it, dial it in perfect, dial the hold in, dial the release in, and you can really get a tighter sounding drum kit. So that's a part of the sound. Really cool. This is pretty cool to have. It's like a, it's like you check my tonsils. <laughs> no. So anyways, so with that being said, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, make, uh, make the drum kit tighter. So a gate, shuts down and it actually makes the drum kit perceived to sound punchier so that's what we're going to use this plugin for so we have these two and then the next thing i was talking about is the de-esser so as i put this de-esser on this is a sweet plugin by plugin alliance as well um, it's a replica of the bx council it's the the focus right council so it has a de-esser built in we have it set pretty much to where it was dialed in when we when the plugin opens around 5k because that's the snap of a of a snare snap of uh the kick and what that's going to do is it's going to find that frequency range and pull it in and watch what it does really cool Okay, so now as you see this, hold on. Sorry, guys, I'm getting used to this. This is crazy. I'm over here vibing out with nothing going on. What's wrong with me, dude? Um, let me move this over here. See, dude, I got to get used to this. Once I get used to it, I'll be okay. So, yeah, so what we're doing here on screen was gate in, gate out, de -er, in and out. I'll pump these things through. Let's take the compression off. Um, let's take this band off, this band off, and watch the subtle changes. But all the subtle changes are to make the drum kit sound punchier. So there's a goal in mind. That's what we're talking about in this video. There's always got to be a goal. So if you're sending your stuff to get mixed, you should always have like something in mind. Like, you know, Doug, I want it to sound like really punchy towards the speakers because some people want the exact opposite. No, I don't want punch. I want it to sound like reverbed and more atmospheric and people will explain what their sound is. And as a as an engineer, you should be able to get that sound. You should be able to do what people ask. So the thing is, is as I push play on this, watch how it just tightens up just enough. I'm not changing their, their drum kit. I'm not changing their sound. I'm not, I'm not overly doing something, and I'm not just putting a bus compressor on. I'm literally just doing small things that make big differences. And that's what, when, when we talk about mastering, that's what we're talking about. These small things, we're talking a lot of small things that make one big thing happen. So watch as the, the image of this drum kit comes together just one by one. first. 
tighten it up. Compressor for the snare. DSer for the snare and the, the level of it. Perfect. Maybe too much, I don't know. Let's mess with this again, because I, I really just sort of didn't really pay attention to what I was doing. Um, so let's find a band that makes the kick sound a little bit better. Roundness-wise. Right about there. Hats. Let's get way up there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. need that. It's taking away the snap. Let's try this hot shrill. Wow. That might be too much, but what are we going to do, right? That sounds pretty sweet. Oh my gosh, dude. Totally different. So that's the fun. Like this is what's fun to me as a as an engineer. I love doing this stuff. Um, to me, that if I sent that back to them and, and said, "Dude, you want to punch? Here it is." Like I think they'd be like, "Yeah, that was pretty punchy, dog. I like it." We can keep emphasizing punch. Here's another cool one that I got to show you. Um, it's from Plugin Alliance. Those guys must like punch. No, but you can change this. That's why whether we're talking about hardware. Whether we're talking about plugins, whatever we're talking about, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's the creativeness. It's like the paintbrush, okay? So don't ever be discouraged if you don't have hardware, please, okay? That's not what my last videos were all about. If you only have a few plugins, you can get some stuff like this done. And plugins have come down in price, um, and they, they become a lot better. So, you, we, so we got some punch. Let's say the guy, you know, I send it off to the guy, and he's like, Doug, I like it, but it's just not, it's not there yet. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> so you guys know what I'm talking about if you've worked with people you're going what so um let's let's add another one from Plugin Alliance which is a very popular way of doing this too it's called the um dynamic EQ I think it's yeah this one really cool plugin so this is almost like an expander but not necessarily it's an it's an EQ that that works off a of dynamic so you can use you can use the threshold and compress and find that range really cool for just lifting something out of the mix so let's listen and see what we can find and, and push play on this and see what we got let's go over to light yeah let's go to the 5k and see if we can mess with it a little bit Pretty sweet. Just enough, but it's cracking it. I'd have to turn it all down. Let me turn it down a little. Crazy, right? More kick, more punch, more punch. I was going to use this one in this video, but eh, I'll use it. So, so I'm just doing this as examples of stuff you can use in the mix. Let me flip that over there again. So, so dynamic EQs. Um, there's this thing called the pan EQ. These are more unorthodox ways. This BX counsels a more you know more widely available way that we've done it through the years it's it's a it's a channel it's a line amp it's a channel strip it's got eq dsing it's got everything you would need to to refine that sound and it's really really cool it sounds really good i love the sound of this so yeah so we did expanding uh we did compression just to pull it out a little bit we we used dsers we did a little bit of eq low mid high mid and we did the points on this. So that was around 160. This was around six 
six K, that's actually where the treble in your car is on most most vehicles. Um, nine hundred. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, around one K nine hundred. We added a little bit of life to it. We added four K at around six decibels, and then on the right here, we added about six decibels. That's a lot. I mean, I'm 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 changing the sound of it, but. You can't be afraid to do that, man, because people want it that way for a reason, and it's given it so much more life. Now let's now let's just add one more thing, okay? And that is this. So here's another way to add snap. A lot of times in a drum kit or a sound in general, a vocal, um, the punchiness that we perceive is not there because of the room that it was recorded in. So a lot of us that record at home or we record podcasts or we record things on um, on the fly, we're not really thinking about the actual room and how it affects it. And that's like recording uh, engineering 101. It's like, what room are we in? How do we set the mics up? How do we do that? So that's a whole class in itself. But they have come out with plugins that can take reverbs out of things. Now, this one's from Isotope. There's another one from the company. Um, I really, really went on a buying tear on Plugin Alliance. But they, they made one, too, from SPL. And this is a simple-to-use one. And this just really just takes that, that, uh, that reduction of the room just by one knob. And it'll pull some of the room out. So watch as I push play and, and start to take some of the room out. The perception is, is the less verb, the more punch it has. And if you know how to use reverb correctly, you can EQ that stuff. So it's the wrong frequencies that are clashing with it that, that take away the punch. There's actually a really cool reverb from Isotope they just came out with that they EQ the reverb. And we'll show you that in a video too. But once you get rid of those muffled frequencies, if you don't in the reverb itself, it just doesn't sound as punchy and, and it doesn't sound as it's got as much life. So just think about that. So let's let's take some of the verb out. So now I'm gonna tell you I think I did enough job. If I if you if you add too much D verb, it sounds lifeless. It it sounds like you were in a um, like a anaconic chamber and it's like you know, like with a guy doing and you just you gotta have some reverb. Um, I don't know what that was, but so yeah, so this is where we're at. So but watch this one. Now let's check out this D verb. And we can really tune this one. So let me learn the drums. Let's see what we got here. Let's add it. I think we did what I was trying to do with this. Let's take all this stuff off. Oh my gosh, dude, that's not bad. Hello guys, I don't think I need the D verb on there, but all right. So that that's pretty much the sum of it. Um, we'll end the video like that, squeaky chair and all. I appreciate you guys continuing to support this channel. I see there's still uh, you know uh, a lot of people that still support what I'm doing. I love doing videos. I get to meet a lot of people and work with a lot of people I never would have got to meet. So thank you for that. And with our new operating sort of system here with the laptop so i don't have to worry about it being on my main computer i think we can do a lot more videos so that's just a unorthodox way new tools pan eq um bx council dynamic eq and that's just how you get the punch out and and that's just just some tips for you guys out there so my name is doug jenkins check this out dude still image boom son we'll see you guys I'll see you next time, and, and hopefully just a lot sooner. We'll see you.